Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Um, this is going to sound strange coming from a vet, but I was scared of dogs when I was a kid. Um, most of the ki dogs that I had to hang out with when um, I was a kid all snarled and they barked at me and people would keep showing me the horrific dog bite wounds. And also, as kids, we would even tease each other about getting rabies, whether or not it even existed. And so I grew up being terrified of dogs. But all that's changed now ever since I've fallen in love with Peppy. <laughs> So three years ago, I finally adopted my first dog as a 30-year-old, um, and she now practically lives in my handbag, and I do smuggle her into restaurants and movies all the time. It's, it's a little bit crazy, I know, but the thing here is, I've forgotten what that fear feels like, because now I love dogs. Now, I think the reason why my relationship with dogs have blossomed so much, even though rabid dogs are not an issue here in Australia, is because the public health and animal management policies that we have in the developed world have worked so well that many of us have never have had to experience watching our best friends turn into our own enemies. While dogs are seen as the enemy in many developing, developing communities, communities, not only because there's so many of them and dogs have become a nuisance, but very much so because dogs are the main source of rabies for these people. And one of my friends who grew up in Bangalore, he was bitten unprovoked when he was out cycling as an eight-year-old in his own neighborhood. And that's just what happens. But he was one of the lucky ones because his family could afford the post-exposure treatment and, and they got to it straight away. And with that, the risks of developing rabies decreases dramatically. But for a lot of people who don't know or can't afford or can't access the treatment in time, rabies is 100% fatal. And the thing is, it's really sad that a lot of these people are children and one child dies every 10 minutes from rabies. Um, so you can understand how when rabies does break out into a community, that waves of panic ripple across them. And since dogs are the main source of rabies in people, if we remove the dogs, then we remove the rabies. It makes sense, right? So people start culling dogs in a bit to stop it, but the evidence doesn't suggest it works. On the island of Flores, Indonesia in 1998, they killed 300,000 dogs over a space of four years, wiping out a whole 48% of the dog population, but only to watch rabies spread across the island. A little bit closer to home, and not to freak you guys out, but rabies was first broken out in Bali in 2008. Once again, they implemented a dog culling strategy at the start, and once again, by the end of 2010, rabies had spread across the entire island. This band-aid approach that's still currently used in so many places in the world today just doesn't really quite work. And I'm going to try to explain why. Now, I'm going to bring it down to the dog level. Now, this is a dog that lives in the garbage dump in one of these towns, and there is just enough food and water for her and for all the other dogs that have their own little patch in this community. What happens if you take her away is that all of a sudden, you've got this empty space with food and shelter because a lot of these communities have inherent issues with garbage disposal and sanitation. Now, the dog that lives down the road is pregnant, and five months ago, it gave birth to six pups. And one of the pups have now gone out looking for food and shelter and a place to call home, and he stumbles across this, that little patch. And there's food and shelter there, and it's no longer being defended. So he makes it his home, which is great for the dog, but for, for us, we're kind of back to where we started. And this new dog, maybe he's got rabies but we just don't know it yet. Uh, and even if there weren't other dogs around, other animals like rats and cats and monkeys now have an opportunity to thrive in this same space. And rabies can spread to basically any mammal. Now in Bali, once again, not to freak you guys out, please go there on a holiday. It's still beautiful. I just came back from there. But stay away from the monkeys because monkeys are now coming out of their usual habitats. And monkey bites, which used to be relatively uncommon, have now increased dramatically over the last few years, ever since the dogs were removed from the, from the community. And the new Indonesian newspapers, in fact, reported this May this year that a 69-year-old man had died after being attacked by monkeys while bathing in the river. Whether or not those monkeys had rabies, we will never really know. But the thing is, we do know culling doesn't work, and in fact, it may even make things worse. So what else can we do? Well, in 2005, the people from the state of Sikkim in India which is near Nepal and Bhutan, they came up to us here at Vets Beyond Borders and they said to us, you know what, we're sick of shooting dogs and it is getting us nowhere. So what else can we do? So we said to them, well, let's turn it around. We can turn these dogs from being the enemy 
to being our protectors like they were meant to be. We will use technology that's been around for decades and we will vaccinate every single dog we can get our hands on, owned or stray, and then we'll desex them and keep them there to stop this movement of dogs. And then we'll surround ourselves with a stable population of vaccinated dogs. Because once we've got that, we've got this shield around us, a shield of dogs that will not only defend their territory, but because they're vaccinated, they'll be highly unlikely to pass on rabies even if they were bitten. And so now, when other dogs and other animals like raccoons and jackals and bears with rabies from the outside try to get in, they can't. They stop right where the vaccinated dogs start. And we only need to get to 70% of these dogs for it to work. And in places like Tanzania, after the first vaccination campaign, dog bites reduced by 51%. By the third campaign, 92%. In fact, in places like the UK and the Western Europe and Japan, rabies was completely eliminated by 1990 precisely because of this approach. And so, together with Foundation Bridget Bardot, which is French, we initiated this campaign in, and strategy in Sikkim. And two years after we started in 2005, for the last five years, we haven't had a single case of a human's rabies death reported statewide. And the best part for me is that images like these are now coming from the children. So that's a picture of kids bringing their dogs to us now voluntarily for vaccinating and desexing. And on the right is from an art competition where we ask kids to draw us a picture of their relationship with dogs. And on top of all of that, when you weigh up the cost of vaccinating and desexing these dogs versus the cost of expensive treatments and the loss of livestock from rabies, and most importantly, the loss of human life and its very potential, it even makes economic sense. And so this is the basic idea that we and many other aid agencies around the world are still trying to share with these communities and their, and their governments. Some of them come on board, some of them don't. Some of them that do come on board, well, they may not get it off really successfully because the lack of veterinary expertise is one of the major impediments in getting this idea off the ground. So for years, many of us have had long-standing projects in these countries. And every year, veterinary volunteers from Australia and all around the world take their own time off to go to these countries and projects and actually risk their own lives to help these people and their animals. And well, Vets Beyond Borders, we're gonna push the boundaries a bit and this year we're taking it a step further. Together with the Australian government, the University of Queensland and the Animal Welfare Board of India, this year we launched Vet Train in June in India. Instead of just sending vets to vaccinate and desex these dogs, we are sending vets to train the local vets and their assistants and their dog catchers and their project managers so that they can go out there to vaccinate and desex these dogs and start their own projects in their own communities and give them their best chance at making it work. Because then maybe one day we can change the world and kids don't have to grow up fearing dogs like I did. Thank you.